All right, so hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to our session. I'm Ashram Mathur. I'm the tech lead and manager on the performance team at Salesforce. Um, hey, everyone. I'm Shweta Zoshi. I'm a lead engineer at Salesforce on a team that you may say is kind of obsessed about performance. Uh, the team is spread out across San Francisco. We have people in Paris, Chicago, and we have a lot of contributors across the engineering org. And this presentation is thanks to their efforts to make Salesforce faster. All right. So before we get started, all right. So before we get started, uh, the safe harbor. Uh, please make your. Uh, sorry. Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry. So please be informed that a lot of these are forward-looking statements in the presentation. Please make your buying decisions on what's commercially available. So let's kick it off, right? So. Just click on it. All right, so let's kick it off. So let's have a show of hand of if you think that performance really matters. Who do you think performance really matters? Whoa. <laughs> I still see a couple of you not raising your hands. And well, we at Salesforce, we believe a fast and optimized uh, end user experience is super important. And performance does really matter a lot. All right, so today we're talking about the Lightning experience and how we're making Lightning experience faster, and how this is going to enable you, our customers, to go even faster. So we want to talk about two aspects here. We want to talk about, one, the users who are the end users of our application, and what you guys can do to take, get the best out of the system and like leverage all the optimizations that we are doing at Salesforce on our end for you. And then it's also targeted towards admins and developers who are going to be building these components and applications and customize these applications on top of the Salesforce platform and how, you, how this can enable you to go even faster. So like when we at Salesforce talk about performance, we really like to think about it as fast bikes and getting to the finish line. So when we talk about that, we really focus on this for two reasons. One, it's, like, it's really fast, right? So we like these fast bikes. It focuses on performance. It's all about speed and performance. And the raw speed of these bikes like, is really amazing, right? And then the second reason that we really focus on like, performance and speed is that this is applicable so, like, a lot on Salesforce also, right? This is like, as we look at these bikes and as we look at MotoGP and a lot of these other racing competitions, these bikes get faster year over year. There are a lot of continuous improvements to make these bikes faster. So as we look at the engines and the tires and all the underlying dynamics, there's a lot that goes into making these bikes faster. And that is something that we have a lot of parallels at Salesforce. We work a lot on making our engines faster. And then there's always this dynamic between the bike and the racer. Right? So as the underlying bike changes and there are continuous improvements to the bike and the engine under you, right, the driver also has to adapt to all of these changes on how you can leverage these optimizations and how you can build on top of these. Right? So our session today is really focused on the, these three aspects. First, we're going to be talking about the user experience. We want to talk about how speed ties into user experience and how you can leverage that to you know, understand how you can make things faster. What are the challenges we see and how you can overcome those challenges? Second, we want to talk about what we are doing at Salesforce on our end to make our applications faster. These are the improvements we want to do so that you can get the best out of your applications. And third, we're going to be talking about best practices. This is what you can leverage so that you can build on top of our applications to make your applications go faster. So with that, I want to talk about user experience. right? So Shweta, like, how do you think performance ties into user experience? Well, I'm going to say that, well, this doesn't work. OK. Performance is the user experience. Uh, in this day and age, uh, end users are extremely sensitive to web performance. It's almost like slow is the new down. And with that in mind, we, we really think that tying all of this together and focusing on the end user's experience is super important. Um, Talking about how you go about achieving that, well, there are a bunch of key metrics, key performance metrics out there in the market. Salesforce is no different. Um, 
like just about any other cloud application, there are a bunch of layers in the software stack. We care about each of these layers, be it at the database level, where the kind of queries, queries you write, the query performance time, the query plans, or on the API side, just the execution time or how it reacts when the load with concurrency increases. That's super important, too. We also care about uh, the JavaScript execution time and, in general, how the, the front end UI is rendering and what time it takes. That said, at Salesforce, we think there's one metric that rules it all. And for us, that one metric that rules it all is uh, something we call as EPD. That's kind of the, the one metric we really care about. It's an acronym. Uh, it's an acronym that essentially stands for the experience page time, uh, which is known popularly in the industry as the full page load time. Um, what we believe is it defines or it kind of ties in the end user's experience and puts that in the, uh, in the spotlight. And all the other key metrics that we just spoke about uh, tie in together with it. So it kind of those metrics then become variables in this equation that we have towards performance and optimization. Um, now that we know what constitutes EPD, uh, we also need to be aware about factors that impact performance. Uh, a few to start with would be, say, the browsers and devices out there in the market. Um, there are a bunch of them out there, and the combination of what type of browser you use, uh, what type of device you're on, can um, have some kind of varying impact to your performance characteristics. And one needs to be aware about that. The next one is just the, net, uh, the varying network characteristics. I mean, that's kind of a very popular uh, known thing in the industry. Um, and you need to build around uh, varying network characteristics, which you know your, your end users are going to have, uh, and factor all of that in when you work towards optimizations. So if you talk about an optimization checklist, I mean, the first thing that you clearly have to do is um, identify all your challenges, figure out where really the, the pain points are, what your users really need or care about. So once you have that, um, you then work towards identifying what's the, ro the root problem. You need to know what is slow, when is it slow, where is it slow. And once you know that, you can use the typical performance methodology to profile, analyze, and identify the hotspots. And once you know what the hotspots are, you can prioritize and fix towards getting what really matters and getting the biggest bang for your buck. So now that we know that, you would ask, what's the goal at Salesforce? I think for us, Ashray, the one goal, the one clear goal that we have is to provide a seamless experience to our user. Um, we think that if you put the user in focus, everything else just falls in place. There we go. So everything else falls in place. Well, with that said, let's move on to how exactly are we going to, you know, how exactly do we work towards making that possible? All right. So with that, let's talk about uh, like you know, what we're doing to make Salesforce faster, right? So we want to break this section down into what we're doing to optimize the server, what we're doing to optimize for network, and what we're doing to optimize for the browser, right? So let's talk about the server first, right? So server is something that we have been optimizing over the years, right? Like as we have grown, and these are the same APIs that we've been improving under the layers for over the years, right? So we're always working on faster APIs. Right? We want to make sure that every single time we look at APIs and we look at usage patterns to understand how users are using this. And then this is something that we optimize year over year. So every single time you use, so we have like 4 billion transactions on our application uh, platform. Right? So we make sure all these API calls, when they are happening, they are really performant. Right? We work on more parallelism. We, want, we understand that as you're using all of this in the cloud, we want the cloud to do the, more of the work for you. So we want to make sure all of these applications, all the APIs you're calling, all the server requests you're making, they're as parallel as it can be on the back end so that they can give you the best response times. We're working on caching more things more appropriately. So we want to understand what is important, what is the data that needs to be cached, and how it can be cached more closer to the edges so that we're not making more trips to the database or the application layers to get you better performance and response times. And finally, 
we, like, we all have this multi-tenant architecture, right? So you're aware of how we have different organizations all relying on the same uh, application stack. We want to make sure with that, what challenges come in, we want to make sure we optimize for those challenges so that they can get really tuned queries, really fast performance, right? And one example that I would give here really is of the Activity Timeline API. So over the year, basically, we have re-architected this to achieve better parallelism. We have used multi-threading to do all the work in parallel. And we are basically working on trying to get you this performance. So as you can see from this graph here, right, we have tried to re-architect this to get better performance from the server side. Right? And there are really a lot many server optimizations that we can talk about. Right? And when you look at, it, look at it from the server perspective, there are list views and reports. They have different design considerations that you as a user can come in and look at, how do I get the best practices? Do I use the right filters? Am I using the right indexes on my list views and filters? Right? My APIs, am I using the right APIs? Is it the SOAP API I'm supposed to be using, or the bulk API, or REST API? A lot of these are design considerations that you need to know as best practices about what you can do to use the best. The SOCL and the SOCL sharing, Right? A lot of these are design considerations that we need to get into your mind. So when you are designing for, when I make a call back to the server, how can it get back in the leanest amount of time what is required from the end user's perspective for that particular page, for that particular functionality and feature? So while we're not going to be covering a lot of these in depth, like we already had a session which covered architecture at scale, which covered a lot of these topics, and we are going to be giving these resources to you so that you can look at how you can optimize for the server side. And there was a ton of information about what we are doing to optimize across all of these layers. So this is really awesome that you can consider. And then there's a talk tomorrow that we're going to be linking to, which has the API considerations for your applications. So then I think from the Lightning experience, we're really focusing on network also. We know that network is something that you know, is not really in our control, right? This is something that is beyond our control. We have a lot of users have different network latencies. So you'll have a different network latency here when you are sitting at Dreamforce. Probably you are using BAR that has a different network latency. If you're going to be in EMEA or APAC, you're going to have different network latencies depending on what servers you're hitting to. And those considerations is like something that is beyond your control. So what can we do to address those challenges? Right? So one of the things that we use is a Lightning Data Service. Right? Lightning Data Service allows us to reuse data across different components. Like Lightning application is a really component-based application, and you can build components. And as you build multiple different components, a lot of these components reuse the same data. So as you can see in this picture here, right, we have the highlights panel and we have the detail panel. They are using the same opportunity record. So what happens is when we have both of these components using the same records, right? Like what would not be optimized if both of them go separately to fetch the same information from the server? So what we have done is provided something like a Lightning Data Service, which enables you to share information across this. So in this picture, like when we are using internally for Opportunity Workspace, the Lightning Data Service, it allows us to share the same data using Lightning Data Service across these different components. So we fetch the information once, and that information is shared across both the components. Right? So let's look at how is that architectured and how you can leverage this. Right? So as you're building multiple different components, you'll have multiple components will probably use the same data structure. Right? So when you have multiple different components, you can use the Lightning Data Service to be your controller. So you ask this controller, give me the information I need for this opportunity record or any other information you need. As long as it is using the Lightning Data Service, it goes to the shared cache. And that shared cache allows it to get three benefits. One. It consolidates all the requests for the data that is shared across these components. So instead of getting the information on the server three different times, we're going to get this one time. Right? So this is all consolidation of network requests, thereby saving the network time. Second, once we fetch this information and it is available on the client-side cache, we do not have to repeatedly fetch this information again. So what that means is there are no server trips on cache hits. So once this information is fetched once for one of the components and some of the other components need this, it's already in your client-side cache. You do not need to go to the server again to fetch this information. And that's useful because now you have network latency in your control. And even though you don't really directly control network latency, you can optimize for it. And then finally, this makes your data available offline. So when you look at data being available offline, it is really about how can you make this information available for especially mobile users who want to use this information offline. 
So that's, that's one of the benefits. So one of the usages and applications we see of Lightning Data Service in our applications internally is the storable actions. And this is something that's available even as component developers if you're building on the Lightning platform to all the uh, developers, right? So what we do is we use the same Lightning Data Service to cache information on the client. So how does that help, right? So one, you can mark your server-side actions as storable, which make them cacheable on the client. And then you can focus on once you make this request, right, it will get this information and cache this response from your actions from the server side on the client. Every single time somebody else requests, you go back to the same page, right, or within an expiration time, it will give you this information from the cache, go back to the server and mark this information. If there's a delta, it will apply the delta to your pages, as opposed to going to the information to the server, taking a long round trip time, and getting back to some information from the server. And then thirdly, if this information on the client is expired, let's say you spend a lot of time and you spend a day, and then you come back the next day, that information is stale. So this information will expire even on the client, and this time it will actually go to the server to fetch the latest recent information from the server. And this is one application of using the Lightning Data Service and storable actions. One of the other things I want to talk about is how we're using queuing. So as we have all these different components, Ideally, all of these components would be making multiple different calls to the server to get information from their server-side controllers. By default, the framework and platform allows you the functionality to batch these requests together. So what happens is every single time you create an action, you're going to be enqueuing those actions against a batching service. And that batching service is going to batch all of these multiple actions. So as you have multiple components, you'll have multiple actions generating from those components. But when they all go against the action service, and when they go against action service, it, it is responsible for batching all of this information. So if all of this information comes at the same time, it batches it and then sends one request to the server instead of sending three different multiple requests. That saves Thereby, network latency too, right? I it mean, saves a lot of network latency. So imagine having the network latency across three calls and now saving all of those three calls across one call. So that is the benefit of you know, using the Lightning Platform and how it allows you to optimize for network. So I mean, I mean, Asher, that was great. Uh, one thing I do want to add is for caching, it's not just the record data that is being cached. It's the metadata. It's the record layouts. It's the component definition. So Lightning Data Service is pretty cool. And that's something that the Salesforce team is continuously iterating on. Um, so with that, we're going to move on to browsers. I'm going to go this side. Uh, so. Um, the, the guys at Google, essentially, they, ha they coined this term called as Rail, which is essentially a bunch of uh, best practices. In today's day and age, the users essentially expect pages to be fast, responsive, uh, and interactive. And I guess that's something that at, at, in our team we really put our efforts and time into. Um, a little about Rail, it is, it is essentially... Um, it breaks down the life cycle of a web page into four buckets. The first one being response. So as soon as a user clicks into something, say you're on your list view, you're trying to drill down into a record home, uh, you need an immediate feedback. You need to know that what you clicked on actually happened. Uh, the next is animation. Say you're scrolling, there shouldn't be any jank. It should be smooth. Idle time is something for developers and people optimizing performance. I mean, those are just buckets of idle time that, that are there in a complete page load. And you need to find a way to utilize that time and offload work that can happen asynchronously. And the load time is essentially your complete load of content. And that should happen in a reasonable amount of time. The reason we like Rail and the met its methodologies is because it puts the user in the center. And um, that's exactly what we want to achieve in terms of the end user uh, perspective. Um, so talking about uh, how an unoptimized rendering would happen, you would have a page that you want to drill into. You click into it, you see an empty page, and it's empty, and it's empty. And after a couple of seconds, you see all the comp uh, content show up in one go. Um, that's definitely not a smooth transition. That does not meet the best practices that we want to enforce at Salesforce. Um, so the things that a couple of the things that we do would be one perceived performance. Um, we add uh, stencils, which are essentially f it's it, there's there's some kind of feedback for the user that the next page is about to load uh, and things are happening in the background. 
So we show stencils when the response takes more than a couple of hundred milliseconds. And that's great because it, it, it leads to a better responsiveness and transitions between page loads. So that's, one, that's best practice one. The next thing is progressive rendering. As you all know, um, all our pages are now broken down into components. Those are individual blocks of work. On the client, the components essentially need to do JavaScript executions. They have their server trip. The callbacks come, and then you do the JavaScript executions. You have some CSS work. You'll do the render and paint. Um, this rendering and this, uh, this can happen essentially in a more progressive manner. And um, that's what we try to do because we want to we were working towards prioritizing the critical path. A lot of the pages in Salesforce now are, are content heavy, but typically any user navigates to a page and there are a few key things that he wants to check out. I mean, if you're moving towards an opportunity workspace, you want to know which opp opportunity you've navigated to, what, then the next thing you would check is maybe the sales path, see what the current status is. So those are the key critical uh, elements on the page that we want to prioritize up in the page load. Um, and we tie that in with the progressive rendering that uh, I just spoke about. So with these couple of best practices, you go towards an optimized rendering path, which would then take you to an empty page with a few transitions telling the user that, yes, things are loading. And then uh, you start loading uh, the key components, maybe the ones at the top, or the ones that you think are most important for the user. And then you load the full page content in a very reasonable amount of time. Um, and this is great because, I mean, this is an example of how we are trying to achieve or uh, to implement the real best practices because uh, we now have response. We, we are trying to make the animation better, faster, jank free, and essentially provide the user a more progressive, um, optimized uh, user experience. So, with that said, I mean, we just spoke about the server um, and there are a bunch of ways you can do optimizations on the server. There's the network, well, latency is bad, but then you have this cool thing, Lightning Data Service, which can kind of help elevate the problems to people who are remote or who, have a, who just don't have good network bandwidth. And then you have the client and a bunch of best practices that can help make the page load better. With that said, how do we make sure that these things are actually working? You definitely need to measure. Um, and we measure a lot at Salesforce. Um, essentially, we, we log a bunch of metrics. There's a bunch of telemetry that we do. We trend uh, features, page performance across releases. Um, there's a lot of internal testing that's done where we try to drill down into the distributed tracing. We collect the metrics from all the key uh, areas and layers, be it the database, be it the app, app server. Um, also the JavaScript execution time and things like that. And we also collect metrics from the production. We try to see what our customers are facing, and we bring back that knowledge internally and try to make that more popular within the development community <coughs> to avoid bad practices or avoid things that can adversely affect performance. Um, I would also like to highlight one tool that is now that is available to the developers. That's the Salesforce Lightning Inspector. It is essentially a plugin in the uh, the Google Chrome tools, the uh, the Chrome developer tools. Um, that's a pretty neat tool because it will it, it it allows the Salesforce developers to look into the individual component performance uh, and identify or isolate what's happening when the component loads. It's also a great way to identify which components are slower and locate where in the component hierarchy the slowness is, has occurred. Um, so that's pretty neat. And that's also something that's being worked on. Uh, and new features are being checked in every few yeah. releases. So uh, right. moving on. So then, I mean, we've seen like how we can attack some of the challenges. Like we understand what the challenges are. We are looking at how we can optimize for those challenges, and then essentially looking at best practices, right? So when we come to best practices, a lot of this is directly applicable to one. The users definitely see this out of the box. So when you are using the CRM Lightning experience, you 
get all of this functionality that is optimized for you. But as you are building components and applications on top of the Lightning Platform, this is all something that you have to keep in mind that you can leverage to build on top of this engine that we have at Salesforce and then adapt to these changes so that you can get the best from these optimizations to get the best experience for your users who are going to be using your features and functionality. So when we talk about the performance best practices, right, we, one, have to understand the challenges. right. So we talked about a few challenges that we see. We talked about browsers. We talked about different types of devices. We talked about the network. And all of these are challenges that can be overcome. And that is one of the key challenges for us to understand and then address. Second, we're talking about the performance goals. right. So we talked about keeping the user at the center, right? So we really want to focus on the user, make sure the user has really good experiences, and then make sure those experiences are delightful so that they get really optimized. Three, we talked about the server. We want to make sure you are as lean on the server as possible. There are a lot of best practices to follow on the server, and there are going to be some resources we link to that can help you kind of understand the server optimizations. We talked about the network latency and its impact. That helps you understand how you can optimize for network, and then finally, how to optimize heavily for the browser. Right? So with, when we get all of these aspects right, it helps us really turn this like, application experience into a really flawless experience, and then get to the finish line. Right? And that helps us understand how the application work, mm -hmm. how do you make it faster, how we can go faster, and how we can enable you, our customers, to go faster. So with that, I think we're going to be ending the session. We have a couple of links. We're going to be sharing this deck on uh, our agenda session. So we'll have information about the related performance sessions there. We are going to be talking about design considerations when choosing the right APIs. And there's a talk tomorrow to address that. Uh, there are a couple of other talks which happened about the architecting at scale. This focuses on the server side optimizations. And there's also the uh, good talk about all the features available from the Lightning Inspector that gives you a good drill down on how you can use this tool to measure and optimize the performance. Thank you all for coming to our session. And let us know if you have any questions. Thanks. <laughs>